I think parents are nervous, obviously, when it's a new thing, especially. So to let their kids know, you know what, I know you're going to really have a great time and enjoy this. I think it's important that the parents really communicate that and don't give the kid an idea that there's like something to be worried about. I think that's important. Hello and welcome to the Sunshine Parenting Podcast, where each week we talk about ideas for raising kids who become thriving adults. I'm your host, Audrey Monkey. I'm a summer camp director, writer, and speaker, and I've had the privilege of working with thousands of children, teenagers, young adult counselors, and parents over the past three decades. My husband, Steve, and I are raising five kids who currently range in age from 15 to 25. So my interest in raising kind, optimistic, self-reliant kids who become thriving adults is personal as well as professional. If you're a regular listener to the podcast, you know that one of my favorite topics to discuss is summer camp. In this episode of the podcast, I'm chatting with my friend and fellow camp director, Maria Horner, about reasons not to worry while your camper is at camp this summer. Maria and her husband, Tom, have been the executive directors of Catalina Island Camps since 1995. Even before her time at Catalina, Maria was working in the camp industry at a Girl Scout camp. In addition to her many years of working with kids at camp, Maria also works with kids outside of camp as a board member at St. Mark's School and also as a church youth group leader of high school kids at her church. In episode 91, Maria and I talk about four reasons she believes you don't need to worry while your kid is at camp this summer. Today on the podcast, I am thrilled to have Maria Horner back on. Maria is the camp director at Catalina Island Camps. And how many years have you been there, Maria? This will be our 26th summer. Amazing. If you are a regular listener to the podcast, you may remember Maria from her Jedi Mom Tricks from last year, a series of, I believe, three episodes where we got to hear all of Maria's wisdom in her motherly wisdom that she shares with her staff during staff training, which is actually right around the corner for both of us. So I'm really excited though. Today, our topic is very timely and it is called Four Reasons Not to Worry While Your Camper is at Camp This Summer. So first of all, welcome back, Maria. Hi, Audrey. It's good to be here. So I know you've had a busy past month. What's been going on with you? Well, we're just getting ready. You know, our, I'm actually already out on the island. We have our leadership staff come on Sunday and then the following Tuesday, we have another group of staff and then the rest of our staff come and it's like full steam ahead at this point. We have our first campers arrive in just a little under three weeks. So we're all looking at each other saying, where did the spring go? It seemed like it was just January and now we're just on the verge of camp starting. Yeah. What about the winter and the fall? Where did they go to? (laughs) (laughs) They all just flew by. So as we know, actually, that's actually, I don't know if that's one of your reasons, but one of the reasons not to worry is actually the amount of training that we do with our staff. But let's start with your ideas. What's one of the reasons that parents don't need to worry while they're campers at camp this summer? Absolutely. So I came up with four. And I've been thinking a little bit about this. I, you know, like you at this time of year, I'm getting phone calls from most parents who were super enthusiastic in, you know, December, January, February. And now as we're getting a little bit closer, they're getting a little nervous or maybe their kids are getting a little nervous. So I'm getting a lot of those kinds of phone calls. And those are really fun calls for me. I enjoy that. And so these are some of the reasons why I tell parents they shouldn't worry. The first one is that you chose an accredited camp. So if you're coming to my camp, if you're going to Goldero, I know if they're going to any of the other camps in your Happy Campers group, those camps are all accredited by the American Camp Association, which means that those camps care enough to undergo a thorough peer review of its operation. And that 
includes everything from staff quality and training to emergency management, all kinds of things that they're doing voluntarily to ensure that their program is top notch. So you might be a parent right now thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if my camp is accredited or not. So that's okay. You can go and you can check and you can ask them. And if for some reason you happen to have chosen a camp that is not accredited yet, if you go to the ACA website, which is just www www.acacamps.org. There's a whole half of the website that's specifically for parents. And on that website, there's an incredible list of questions to ask a camp director. And I always love when I get a phone call from a parent and I know they have that paper in front of them because I'm just like taking through the questions with them. But those are, that's a great place to start if the camp that you, you've chosen doesn't happen to be accredited yet. Yeah, that's a great tip. I actually have been doing this Ask Me Anything about summer camp series on Wednesdays, just on Facebook Live, and then putting the video on my website. And one of them was questions to ask camp director. And I found so many great resources at ACA and different places and kind of combined them all to come up with sort of good questions to ask. But I do think you're right. Accreditation is a nice assurance for families that at least this camp is taking a lot of effort to meet the industry standards in all of these different areas. So right. that, yeah. it's no small job mm -mm. to get accredited. It's some, mm -mm. There's some real work that goes into it and it's really beneficial to the operation. And you're a trainer, right? You train camp people who are going through the accreditation process? Right. So I do, I instruct in our local area and then I train the instructors as well. So all volunteers, camp professionals from around the country who volunteer to be what we call standards visitors. So every five years, a team of trained standards visitors go into each accredited camp and observe both written documentation and practices actually in place based on the identified standards to see that the camps are in compliance with all of them. And it's a really fun part of my, I mean, it's not my job, it's what I do as a volunteer, but it's, I love it. I love visiting other camps. I love seeing how other people do things. I learned so much from that. And there are a lot of really amazing programs out there. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was a visitor for about a decade or so, and I really enjoyed just seeing these amazing different programs, all the different things going on at camps. It's really terrific. Okay, so number one, you're not worrying because you chose an accredited camp. What's reason number two? So reason number two is because you've been in touch with the camp director. So you've called, you've asked questions, you've gotten the answers that you were looking for. It's so interesting to me. I'll get parents who call me and apologize for calling and asking questions, or even when they email and ask questions, they apologize for being a bother, which I think is so funny to me because if you're going to allow me to take care of your child for two or three or four weeks during the summer, I actually think it's stranger if you don't want to talk to me first. Like, I would imagine you would want to know who's the person in charge of the place where your child's going to be spending a lot of time. So another reason not to worry is because you picked up the phone and you've actually talked to the person who's going to be running the show, wherever it is, where your child is. And you can go on, again, you can go onto the ACA website to find great questions to ask if you can't think of any. But I would imagine if you just sit down with your child or with your spouse, you can probably come up with enough questions on your own. But it's definitely key to pick up the phone and talk. Email is great for like logistical things for sure, but there's something really nice about being able to engage in a conversation over the phone. It's funny that that seems so old fashioned now, but there's just really something about that to really get to know the face behind the signature on all of the paperwork. Oh my gosh, so true. And it is funny, camp people, as you and I can attest, like talking to other people. <laughs> <laughs> or just talking. <laughs> so yes, I agree with that. I did a podcast interview or podcast panel at ACA, at the American Camp Association Conference with several camp directors. And I can't remember exactly what the title was, but basically it was sort of like advice for partnering with your child's camp director. And the consensus, everybody kept saying, oh my gosh, I love it when people call me and ask about things or want to talk about some special need their child has. All of that to us is so great because we're all on the same team and we want the child to have a successful experience. Experience and parent is the expert on the kid, 
we're the expert on camp together, we can make sure that the camp is going to be set up for your child and all that. So I love that advice. And I agree 100%. And, you know, I mean, it's fine even during the summer, but before the summer, you might have a longer chance to chat with a camp director. Right. Well, first of all, we are all always excited to turn away from our computers and actually have a conversation. Like that's a, a phenomenal respite from the administrative work that we have to do. I also think, you know, you said something about, you know, a camper, you know, a special need that they might have. And one of the things that I would really encourage parents is to be as upfront and transparent about your child as possible. Every camp can accommodate different things. We can do a lot at our camp and we can do it way more successfully when we know in advance. If we have to spend a few days figuring out what's going on with the kid, either socially or behaviorally, or even with like their food issues, that's time lost. Or if we knew that upfront, we're going to be able to you know, meet those needs right from the very beginning. And I know sometimes parents are hesitant to share, you know, my child might need a little extra help with this or, you know, whatever. But honestly, it's so much better to know that up front. Yeah. And I'm sure you've had the experience where, you know, a new camper gets to camp and there's something going on behaviorally and you're trying to figure it out. And so you call the parents and then they'll say, oh yeah, this happened at school and this is what they did. Or, and it's like you said, give us the heads up and then we're more prepared. The staff are prepared, the child's in the correct group, all of that good stuff. So, and it's not even just new campers. I had a girl a number of years ago, a long time ago, actually, who was probably on at least her second, maybe her third summer. And she had always loved camp and done great and this summer she was there was just something off about her and when I finally called her mom it turned out that dad was in a hospital he'd been having some health issues and so the poor little like she was like 10 or 11 she was so worried and I just said to mom if you had told me that we could have made arrangements for either you to call me every day to let me know that he's fine, or we could have even arranged, you know, once or twice during her two-week session for her to call and hear her dad's voice. That was all she needed to be okay, but they didn't want to burden us with that information. It was like, oh, please burden me. Yes. <laughs> please burden us. We want it. Okay. I think we've made it to number three. Is that correct? Right. The third reason so, not to worry. The third reason not to worry is because you have prepared your child for the experience. And what I mean by that is that your child has had opportunities to sleep in places other than their own homes, as well as sleep in places where the adults in charge are not their parents. So maybe they've spent the night at grandma and grandpa's house or friends' houses, or they've gone camping with other people. They've been in uh, strange environments with people they're not necessarily related to so that that's not unusual for them. I think that's super important. You also have taken the time to really look at the materials that the camp has sent you. So you've watched all of the videos. I know like most camps, we have a YouTube channel and there are about 80,000 videos there, both the ones that we've produced for marketing purposes. So they're super polished and fun, as well as the ones that our campers make during the summer. We have a program with our GoPro cameras and we have groups of kids make videos every summer. And that's a great way to get an insight into what camp looks like through the eyes of our campers. Um, you've read through all of the materials that we've sent you with your child. So your child knows, here's the packing list. I'm a big I'm um, this is one of my soapboxes in a big believer in packing you and your child packing together um, there's nothing worse when and this happens every summer we have at least one seven-year-old girl who is sure her mother sent her without any bathing suits which is challenging at a beach camp and so I get on the phone and you know call the mom it's like oh no they're in the little outside zipper pockets you know like whatever but the kids don't know where their stuff is so you've packed with them and you've talked with your child about camp and you found out without, I think you really want to focus on the fun when you talk with your child. You don't want to say, okay, so Audrey, you're probably going to miss me. So what are you going to do? Like you don't necessarily need to plant that, but you can definitely engage your child in conversation to get a sense of like their excitement level, what they might be nervous about. And if there are things that they're nervous about, you've worked together to develop strategies for the child to be able to address those. 
Hey, Sunshine Parenting listeners. If you happen to be listening to this episode on the day that it's released, which is June 7th, then this is the one month anniversary of the release of my book, Happy Campers, Nine Summer Camp Secrets for Raising Kids Who Become Thriving Adults. I wrote the book because I wanted to give parents access to the same information that we give camp counselors who are trained to make camp fun, to help foster friendships, and to grow important character traits in our campers like kindness, responsibility, and independence. I've received so much great feedback about people who've started reading and are using some of the ideas and activities that I share in the book. You can pick up your copy at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, Books A Million, Kobo, or wherever books are sold. For more information about the book, as well as a lot of resources, including our summer read-along schedule for the Happy Campers Book Club, visit happycampersbook.com. I was just rereading Homesick and Happy, and I know you send that to your first year families just like we do. And that is one of the things they talk about is just kind of the preparation. It's also kind of the emotional preparation of expressing confidence in your child. So, you know, I think parents are nervous, obviously, when it's a new thing, especially. So to let their kids know, you know what, I know you're going to really have a great time and enjoy this. I think it's important that the parents really communicate that and don't give the kid an idea that there's like something to be worried about. I think that's important. Yeah. So it's very funny. As you know, our son graduated from college a week and a half ago and um, he went to school in Ohio and he had his car there. And the original plan was his best friend from high school was supposed to fly out after his own college graduation and drive back with Nick. But good for him. He got a full-time job that wanted him to start sooner. So Tom and I both said to Nick, you know, do you want us to drive back with you? And Nick really wanted to do it by himself. And I don't know if you remember this, but a week and a half ago, there was horrific weather in the Midwest. There were tornadoes and thunderstorms and flooding, and he was going to have to drive right through that. My sweet little California boy who barely drives in the rain, right? So Tom and I were both super nervous, and but he really wanted to do it. And of course, we were confident in his ability to do it, but it's so, and we know all of that, right? You've got to express confidence. You've got to tell, you know, blah. but still in your heart, you're like, oh my gosh, my baby's driving 2,000 miles across the country through, I mean, he drove through snow in Denver. Like, it's crazy. But so that was a really good reminder for me that I, it's okay for me to be nervous as a mom. It's not okay for me to project that onto my child. It doesn't help him any at all. Well, and I think yeah, it exacerbates if you're already feeling nervous about something and then you see like mom or dad really being nervous, it just makes you worse. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And he made it back fine, had a great trip, did a lot, you know, I mean, that's anyway. A lot of good reflection time. That's great. Yes. After college, like have a long drive just to like listen to music, think about things, plan your life. Yeah, it was good. But it helped me. It was another good reminder of at every stage of life with our kids, there are things that they have the opportunity to do that present incredible growth opportunities for them that present incredible anxiety producing <laughs> moments for us as parents. I'm not sure that that ever ends. I don't think it does, unfortunately. <laughs> I think it doesn't matter how old your children are, you know, if they're traveling somewhere, if they're somewhere far away, it's just impossible not to have some level of worry about that. Okay. Are we on number four already? We are on number four and that's awesome. a perfect segue because number four is that in addition to preparing your child for the experience, you've prepared yourself. And so some of that is about managing your own expectations. If you only have one child or if you have multiple children and they're all going away to camp, your house is going to be really different when they're not there. And getting a sense of like, what is this going to be like for my spouse and I, my partner and I, how, what is this going to, what is this going to look like? And really making sure that as you're thinking through that, you're not talking to your child about how much you're going to miss them. Empty the house is going to feel because you don't want to put that. I mean, that's not fair to lay that kind of guilt trip on your kids. You're also trying really hard not to, how do I say this? Create an unrealistic expectation of contact with your child while they're gone. I am 100% guilty of this, but we have the ability to be in touch with our kids 
all of the time, whether they're in the room next door or they're halfway around the world. And whether that's good or bad is really irrelevant because it just is. And so our camp, like yours and many others, is unplugged. Our kids don't have their phones. So mom can't, you know, be missing little Johnny and send a text message or a Snapchat and hear right back. And so I've had to counsel some parents who expect a letter every day or we do this email bunk note thing, a bunk, two bunk notes a day or, or whatever, or you've gotten into five different photos and given me the special secret hand signal so I know that you're good, or there's another signal that means emergency, emergency, call me right away, you know? And because what happens is kids get to camp and they're having such a good time that they, I hate to say this, they aren't even thinking about what's going on at home because they're so engrossed in what's going on. So they forget to write or for they forget to jump in front of the camera and mom and dad read way more into that than they need to. And the photo thing is such a catch 22, right? It's such a mixed blessing. It's so great for parents to have a glimpse into what camp life is like, but it's so easy to read more into a photograph than is really happening. Oh my gosh. I so agree. It was so funny. We were doing a a first year family orientation. We had a panel of experienced parents and even these experienced parents were talking about, you know, you know, you might see one photo where your child's not smiling or they're in the background. And I'm thinking to myself, well, wait, you know, we don't all go through every day smiling, even when we're feeling fine. (laughs) So why is the expectation that, I mean, perhaps if they're posing or whatever, but sometimes kids are just sick of having their photo taken. Sometimes kids don't smile for their parents, even if they're feeling happy. (laughs) I agree that the overanalyzing is not good. And and I also, that thing about the symbols, like what I really want parents to communicate to their kids is, hey, at camp, there's all these adults there to help you have a great experience. So if you need anything, I'm not there. Here's some people you can talk to, your counselor, the camp director, Maria, there's head counselors, there's this, that, and the other. You know, I think that, again, if you look on the website or you call the camp, you can find out who are those people, but usually there's a nurse or a doctor. There's so many different people at camp, and I want, I think that empowering your kids to talk to those people is really important, just like Julie lithcott Haim says in How to Raise an Adult. Like, by the time your kid gets to college, you want them to be able to go into the counseling center talk to the people about the classes that they're going to be taking or go to the health center because they might have an infection and need medicine. And it's like, this is the start of that. So it's not that they have to give you a secret emergency signal. It's they should feel like they understand who to go to if they need anything. You know, I very rarely tell a parent when they call and are nervous that they and their child aren't ready for camp yet. But I did have one mom a couple of years ago who was convinced that her daughter was, and her daughter was like 12 or 13. She wasn't even really young, but was convinced that her daughter, if something was bothering her, that her mom was the only person that she could talk to. There was no one else. And so I went through my normal conversation about, you know, how we train our staff and how we select them and about the older adults like myself who are there, who might be a little more approachable than a super cool 19 year old counselor. There's something nice about being 50 something and no longer cool at all, but I'm <laughs> super cool. Um, plus we have a doctor and two nurses. So there's all kinds of like for reals, fully formed adults there and how important it is for her to feel confident with us so she can pass on that confidence to her daughter, blah, blah, blah. And she wasn't having any of it. She was just like, no, she really just will only talk to me. So she's going to have to be able to, I'm going to have to hear from her. And and I was finally like, you know what? I don't think you're ready. Even if your daughter's ready, I don't think you're ready because you're not going to, your daughter's not going to call you every day to tell you everything's all right. Like that's not how this works. So I'm really sorry. Yeah. We've even, I don't know if you've ever had the people where they'll call and they're like, I have a sense that my child... Like they'll call, they'll be sure that something is wrong with their child because they like had a dream or they had a vision or whatever. And we're like, okay, we, we'll go check on them. And then, you know, invariably the child's okay. But, you know, I do think we are very connected with our kids, which is a good thing and very close. And those close relationships are fantastic. But the dark side is that 
it makes it a little harder when your child's doing something independent from you for you to feel to, for you to have the separation. Well, I'm not, it's to me, so that's my last thing under you've prepared yourself. One of the things that I often tell parents is to really take advantage of this opportunity. The story I often share is I have a good friend who her kids are significantly younger than mine and they've come to camp for, I don't know, this will be their fourth summer. But the first summer they came to camp, they just came for a week and mom and dad were still kind of nervous. So they weren't going to go anywhere. I mean, like you, we have those longtime parents who drop their kids off at the boat terminal and then like go to Europe for two weeks. But, you know, this was a new family, a little nervous, but every single night they went out to a different bar or restaurant in Pasadena and tested out the happy hours. And she, because this friend is a very social media savvy, she was posting pictures every day of her and her husband at all of these great places having this great time and it became this incredible recruitment tool for us because all of her friends were seeing that on social media and like how do we get in on that you know staycation bar hopping thing I don't know but I really do tell parents like use this time if you're not comfortable taking a trip yourself while your kids are gone consider what it means to have some time either just to yourself or you and your spouse together like that doesn't happen very often in the craziness of of life of raising children. And sometimes only one child goes away to camp. So you have another one or two still at home. Take advantage of that new dynamic to do things that you can't do when everybody's there. Because it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a really beneficial thing for everyone. Yes, I agree 100%. You know, it's so interesting, Maria, because when I wrote a post years ago that's been shared quite a bit, five reasons not to worry while your child's at camp, but it was very different from your four reasons. Mine were more the external reasons like about the camp. I mean, the accreditation one was the same, but I really like how yours are really things that people can do themselves to help them not worry, which I love that. Well, I think you're still going to worry. And I think that that's probably the most important thing we convey to parents is that just like we tell kids, it's okay to miss home when you're at camp, right? You can miss home and still have fun at camp at the same time. The two things aren't in conflict with one another. And the same thing is true from the parent side. Of course you miss your child. Like, and of course you're worrying about them. That's to be expected. And you can still allow them to have this amazing growth experience even while you're a little bit nervous. The two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. And I think you can give yourself permission to enjoy yourself, just like that couple you <laughs> shared about. If you oh, want gotcha. to if you wanna like spend some more time on a hobby you haven't had time for, go out to dinner, go to movies, whatever this is, that is there's nothing wrong with that. And actually you giving your child the gift of a more relaxed, happier parent when they get home from camp is amazing. Yeah, what a gift that is. And your child comes home having had this incredible experience and hopefully you've been able to have an incredible experience at home. And I think we have to not feel guilty. Like it's okay to have an incredible experience, not all together. Like it was okay for us to let Nick take that drive. I mean, Tom really wanted to do it with him. He really thought it'd be a cool thing for the two of them to to do together. And he was really bummed that Nick wanted to do it on his own. But that didn't take anything away from the really cool experience he had of making that four day trip by himself. Like it's okay to let them do fun things without you. And it's okay to do fun things without them. I've been thinking a lot lately about the whole ambivalence of parenting, that so many of the things that are like, it's always this kind of mixed bag. Like you're excited for your kid when they have some new adventure or get some great job far away, but then you're also like, oh, bummer, they're kind of far away. And it's like, I think always keeping these things in mind that it's okay to have both feelings at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's not, it doesn't make you a bad parent. It doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you human. Yep. That's so true. Well, Maria, this has been terrific. I think it'll be very helpful to parents as they prepare to send their child off to camp either this summer or at some point in the future. So thank you so much for being on again. Thank you, Audrey. And remember, call your camp director. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I always enjoy my chats with Maria and I hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation as well. You can find notes and links to the other episodes that Maria and I have recorded on the podcast at my website at sunshine-parenting.com. Search for episode 91. 
If you're interested in more resources about summer camp, I have many posts and podcast episodes available on my website at sunshine-parenting.com. Simply click on either podcast or blog to find camp-related posts. If you enjoy the podcast, I'd really appreciate your support. You can simply give Sunshine Parenting a rating or review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you're sending your child to camp this summer, I hope this episode helped you to not worry quite so much. I'd like to end this episode with a quote from a seven-year camper named Caroline. Parents will realize when the kids come back for however long they were gone that they're a completely new person and they have grown so much and they have probably become more confident just because they have gone to camp. This podcast is a proud member of Parents on Demand, a network of high quality shows for families just like yours. Download our free network app on Apple and Android and listen to your favorite episodes on the go.